O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Constantly shape our minds, we pray, O Lord, by the practice of good works, that trying always for what is better, we may strive to hold ever fast to the Paschal mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After staying in Antioch for some time, Paul left and traveled in orderly sequence through the Galatian country and Phrygia, bringing strength to all the disciples. A Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, an eloquent speaker, arrived in Ephesus. He was an authority on the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and with ardent spirit spoke and taught accurately about Jesus, although he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wanted to cross to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. After his arrival, he gave great assistance to those who had come to believe through grace. He vigorously refuted the Jews in public, establishing from the scriptures that the Christ is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great king over all the earth. God is king of all the earth. For the king of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God is king of all the earth. The princes of the peoples are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham, for gods are the guardians of the earth. He is supreme. God is king of all the earth. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. I have told you this in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but I will tell you clearly about the Father. On that day you will ask in my name, and I do not tell you that I will ask the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you loved me and have come to believe that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As everybody, I'm catching up on TV shows that I haven't seen in a while. One of them from the 2000s is The West Wing, the story of the White House and everybody who worked there. One of the catchphrases is, what's next? They're so busy, there are so many things happen and make their way to the White House and to the President's desk. It was their way of saying, I'm thought about this, we've made a decision, now let's move on. What's next, though, really does apply to the readings today, right? What's next could be said, first of all, about St. Paul uh, in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles. He's completed his second apostolic journey, Paul and Sil Silvanus and Timothy, and we hear that for some time he's where it all began, Antioch in Syria, but we also hear that he's 
Making his way now, very orderly, he's doing a visit, an apostolic voyage, and we hear the regions of Phrygia and Cilicia, uh, Galatia and Phrygia. It's a 500-mile territory, so this took time, of course. There's no cars, there's no highways, right? But it shows you how this time is passing and what St. Paul's doing, not resting. The next step after the journey isn't to say, okay, I'm done, I'm not doing anything else. And so we know what he's doing. And then, and then we get this story of someone else who's come forward, that the fruits of the Holy Spirit have produced this young man, Apollos, from Alexandria in Egypt, a center of great learning, a great library existed there. Now, searching for Christ, he's been baptized. He makes his way across the Mediterranean, and now he finds himself in this territory. By God's providence, he finds himself in the same place that Paul's friends Priscilla and Aquila are. And they take him under their wing, and they care for him. So we see how the next generations of disciples of Christ, of these evangelists, happen. It could say coincidence, but we say God's providence, that it's the Holy Spirit working. What's next could be said about the gospel today, where Jesus is explaining to them finally. He says, I have spoken to you in figures. Now I tell you plainly that I am going to the Father. I have been with you, and I'm going back. For us, it's, we know we're going to celebrate on Sunday. We should have done it on Thursday, the solemnity, the Feast of the Lord's Ascension. And we know why, because for the last few days, he said, when I go back to the Father, the Father and I, who are one, will send you the Holy Spirit, who will instruct you in all things, who will teach you, who will stand with you, who will guard you, who will protect you, who will inspire you. So for us, we can say, what's next? Because even now, as we're seeing sort of restrictions lifted, we still yearn for that day when we just want to be back to the way our life was, right? Talking to another priest, a friend of mine, a few days ago, he lamented and said, all I want is to go to a diner and sit at a table and order some food and sit there and eat and have people around me and not have to worry about wearing a mask or how far apart I am or wondering in my head, if this, you know, is all this stuff clean? I just want to go back. What's next is what we begin to think about. But we do it with the eyes of faith. How does God want me to behave? What does God want me to do next? How has the Holy Spirit inspired me? Hopefully we've taken this extra time we've had to pray a little more, to spend time with our families, to love a little more, to give a little of our time, you know, of, uh, of, of helping others or reaching out to them, whether it's just a call or a card, an email, or helping a neighbor who needs some housework, some yard work done, right? What's next is the question we should have each day when we wake up. Lord, I turn to you today and offer my day to you. Tell me what to do next. Jesus told his disciples that whatever they ask the Father in his name will be given. Knowing this, we have the confidence to bring him our needs. For those discerning a vocation in the church, may God grant them wisdom and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments and political leaders, may the Holy Spirit lead them in service to their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, may the joy and hope of the resurrection bring them solace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God the Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, give wisdom to those developing a cure, and help us all persevere in faith. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, may they enjoy eternity in heaven with the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. For Kathy Tortorella and for Ronald Amarino, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Father of love and mercy, we ask you to look kindly upon these prayers, which we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Father, I wish that where I am, those you gave me may also be with me, that they may see the glory that you gave me. Alleluia. Now please join me as we pray a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. So today is Saturday, May 23rd. Uh, we will have our confessions scheduled at 11.30 a.m. to noon and 4.30 p.m. to 5. Especially, I would say, you know, for those who are planning on uh, coming tomorrow, for the reception of Holy Communion for the first time in three months, just about, um, you know, to try to make an effort today uh, to do so, or to get to whatever church you can that's offering the sacrament. So please uh, be aware of that. And then tomorrow uh, we will have uh, stream a Mass at 10.30 uh, here in the church. Unfortunately, we can't have people in the church with us. And then following that, we will be outside to distribute Holy Communion. Uh, we'll have our Knights of Columbus out there to assist showing people how to park, how to space themselves apart. You can either watch the Mass from your vehicle, bring your phones or tablets and watch online, or we will be recording a Mass this evening for Sunday. Uh, please watch it at home, uh, either live or on demand tonight or tomorrow morning before you come to Mass. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.